friends, thanks for returning. I'm so excited to see you again. I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty, and I'm excited for this video. Basically how it happened is, I stopped into my esthetician's office to get this moisturizer that I sometimes use, and there was a beautiful, beautiful young girl behind the counter, and here she is, look at her. And she just looks so outstanding to me, so young and fresh, just totally youthful, that I told her I loved her makeup, and I asked her to tell me how she had done it. And so she told me the products that she used. And basically what I did is I recreated her makeup. I don't know if you can tell. Do you think we look pretty much similar in terms of our makeup look? I'm not sure. It's very different than how I normally do my makeup. And in the comments section, once you get through this and see how I've applied it, if you could let me know what you think. If you like this style of makeup better or my usual style of makeup that you see all over my channel, let me know in the comments section. And before I get into that, I did want to show you the outfit and jewelry that I'm wearing today. I particularly love this two-tone watch. It's got a little bling around it. I always love bling. And I really like these cargo pants and I have some Dream Paris booties on that I really do enjoy as well. And if you're not yet a member of the 50 Plus Beauty family, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel. It's totally free. And if you could give this video a thumbs up, that would be awesome too. Okay, let's get into this. And as I mentioned, I had seen this absolutely gorgeous young lady behind the counter. Why is it at aesthetics salons, they always have these girls who look like they're about 20. And you know, she was probably up in her 30s because she's been behind the counter for years. But she just looks so young and gorgeous and just dewy and fresh faced, almost as if she has no makeup on at all. And this was my attempt at recreating her makeup. I used many of the same products she mentioned, but not all of them. Okay, let's get to it. Let me take off this makeup and I'll take you back about an hour and show you the complete application. Okay, here I am up close and personal. And I always start each makeup application with my City Lips Lip Plumper. Basically, I just put it on my lips because by the time I am ready to apply the lip product that I'll be using, my lips will look a little less liney, a little more full by the time I do apply my lip product. And I'm going to be applying this makeup kind of how the girl told me with just a few exceptions. I always start with my primer though, and this is a fabulous eyeshadow primer. I did a Primer Wars video between this, which is like 850, and the Urban Decay Primer Potion and this one, and it is a lot, lot cheaper. Now, where the heck is my brush? Okay, there's my kitten foot brush from BK Beauty. It's actually an Angie hot and flashy brush, which I really think this is a great concealer brush, and I use it to apply my eyelid primer, that kind of thing. Put it in there where that dark spot is. Okay, now the pretty girl <laughs> had eyeshadow on, and she used a Morphe palette, she said, but it was one of those nine pad Morphe palettes I have the Truth or Bear palette, and so I'm going to go ahead and use that one. And basically, I'm just going to go ahead and put this light color all over the lid. She did have just a little bit of a matte shadow that she used under her brow, and so this will be good. It will show under the brow, and it will give us a nice base for the rest of the eye makeup application. One thing I've noticed about that CoverGirl lid lock primer is it's a little bit tacky which is good but you do need to start with an all over shadow otherwise it's a little difficult to blend your shadow becomes a little bit difficult to blend and usually at this point i would apply a little bit of a shimmery kind of a whitish cream eyeshadow from here to the inside corner and she does not do that she just had a nice brown it looked like a one shade shadow but she basically said it was a darker brown on the outside a little bit in the crease and then a lighter brown on the inside. So I'm going to go ahead with the lighter brown that I use in my crease. I do like this color. It is extremely, extremely neutral. Really, really, really good crease color. I really like this whole eyeshadow palette. It's a good one. And I think it's helpful to drag your shadow up a little bit on the end to give yourself a little bit of a cat eye. However, her shadow was very natural looking. It was not obvious at all that she had a cat eye, but you could see the crease color and you could see the lid color, which is good since it's eyeshadow. Now that I have the crease done, I'm going to go in again with this lighter color, and I'm going to just pack it on the inside of the eyelid, right there. Very unusual for me to do that. We'll see how it looks. Actually, I did this makeup yesterday, and I really, I really liked it. So let me know in the comment section if you end up liking it. It is truly how this beautiful young girl did her makeup, and it was very natural looking and very pretty. 
Okay, now she said she did go a little darker on the outside corner, so I'm going to go into this shadow and just kind of put that in there a little bit on the on the inside of the crease there. Maybe bring it about halfway in is what she said, about halfway in. Okay, I just ran into the bathroom to get a wipe and I realized I have a lot of fallout. Look at that, very, very dark. So I'm just going to go ahead and not only clean out the under eye area, but bring that up in a little bit of a wing. Gotta have a little glam. And I have a cut on the outside of my eye there. I've been on a blood thinner recently. I'm, I'm allowed to stop now, which I'm so happy about because it has not been fun to bleed at various places. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and smooth that out a little bit. Kind of make those two blend together a little more. Now, she did say she did a little bit of shadow under the eye. And so I'm going to go in with this darker brown and just go a little bit. She said it doesn't come in very much. Maybe like a third down there. I used to do it all the way along. And it does just thicken up those lower lashes. Okay, there we are so far. Now, I noticed that her eyelashes looked thick, but she did not wear any eyeliner. So I'm going to go in and do a little of this L'Oreal Voluminous in the waterline because that just thickens up the look of the eyelashes and, and really almost gives you a little bit of a liner look. Not, not extreme though, very natural. Okay, there's that first eye. I don't know if you can really tell, but let's do it on this eye. And basically, sometimes you can really tell. You can see there's a little tan line underneath your lashes if you don't waterline. This just kind of brings it all together. Oh, messed with my contact there. There we go, that is done. Okay, now it's weird for me not to use liner, but I'm going to go ahead and get a good coat of mascara on my eyelashes. And I didn't use my Stila Huge Extreme Lash or the Magnum or something like that to give you really thick, almost clumpy looking, heavy, volumized lashes. She had a much more natural looking mascara on. I did not ask her what it was. Oh no, I did. She was using the L'Oreal Voluminous Mascara from the drugstore, and that is a really good one. One thing I've noticed about it though is you have to use it within the first month or it gets all you know dried out. So I've got one in there, but it's a little too old. So I'm going to go in with my natural mascara, which I love. This is the CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume. And I've used this ever since before I came to YouTube. In fact, it used to be my main mascara I used, period. Because I was a drugstore. I was a drugstore makeup girl for sure. My eyelashes have gotten really long from using the Revita Lash. I'm really happy with how they're turning out because after my lash extensions, they basically went away. So there is that mascara. There's the first coat. I'll go ahead and put the second coat on there. Unfortunately, this tube is a little old, so I'm trying to make it work. Okay, the eyes are done, and I have to admit, it's a little hard to get used to not wearing eyeliner, but we'll go with that. She had used the IT Cosmetics CC Cream all over her face for her foundation. And I would normally do that, but I have been loving this Bare Minerals, and I think it looks so natural. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. And I get it in the color 12 Medium. I tried 12 Light, went back to Ulta and got that, and I didn't like it nearly as well. I had never used this type of a powder foundation like ever. And I just started it, and I, I really like it. Something about it, I think, looks very natural on our, on our older skin, which surprises the heck out of me, because you would think powder foundation was the last thing we would need. But it also seems to have a lot of coverage, which I don't understand how they're able to do that in a light-feeling powder. But see how natural that looks? Your skin shows through, but it covers up the things you want to be covered. This is actually the, the trial size. I got this in a trial kit. But I went ahead and bought the full-size version because I like it so well. But I'm going to finish this off before I go into the, into the full-size version. Okay, now, of course, the cute young girl didn't tell me anything about how she got rid of these black marks around her eyes because, surprise, surprise, at 30-something, she probably doesn't have any black marks around her eyes. I guess I didn't, probably, at that stage. Okay, I love this Pixie by Petra Peach Corrector. And I'll just go in under my under eye bags to kind of null them out a little bit. It tends to bring up black color to more of a skin color, which is just great. Then I'll do a little color correcting over here. 
I also have a product on my under eye bags, which is called, what is it? It is called Dr. Brandt No More Baggage. And I think it really is helping my under eye bags look a little less there, which is great. I always go in with my fingers after that to kind of smooth that out. Okay, next I'm going to go in with my concealer. And actually she did say she used concealer and she used the e.l.f. Matte Concealer. But I just happen to love this Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear. So I will go ahead and use that. I think it's better on older skin. Something about it just really skims over your fine lines and wrinkles. It doesn't exacerbate them as a lot of them do. I would think an, an e.l.f. matte would be very, very drying under the eyes for us older women. There we go. And as you can see, I think my lips are plumping up nicely with that City Beauty product. Okay, now it's time to go in with a little bit of setting powder, and this is a very natural looking one. This is a Laura Mercier transparent or translucent setting powder. And I'm just going to go ahead and dip that brush in there. There we go. Just to set those under eyes and the T-zone area. Ah! Oh, shoot. Oh, look at that. That's terrible. Let me go repair that and come back. Okay, crisis averted. And you all may wonder why I usually use the Charlotte Tilbury pressed powder. I've been using a loose powder again lately and that was kind of a fiasco. Now, before I get into blush, I forgot that I still have my dark inner circles there beside my nose. I guess they're not circles, but they're little dark marks. And I'd forgotten. I usually almost always go in with the L'Oreal blendable crayon in peach. Okay, that doesn't totally get rid of them, but it makes them look a little less pronounced, which is very nice. Okay, let's go in with some blush, and her blush was very subtle, but I'm going to be using this Ilia blush in this color, and I'm going to have to link it below. It's kind of a rosy, pinky brick color, and I think it would look good probably with my, with my shirt. Let's see how it works before I put it on both sides. Okay, and I'm going to be going in with my Angie blush brush, it's one of her BK Beauty set. Ooh, that's pretty. Looks good with that shirt. And that's kind of how her blush looked. A little bit on the brown, more natural tone. It wasn't a pink, definitely. Okay, that looks nice. Let me go in on the other side and I'll do the same thing. I do like that. That's a very pretty color, especially for fall. And always keep the blush at the very top of your cheekbone. I probably should have gone a little bit higher, actually. Just buff, 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 buff. You know, that really does look like you just come in out of the cold and you're just kind of naturally blushing. Okay, at this point, if I were doing my makeup, I would add contour and highlighter to slim down my face. However, I'm sure she didn't have any of that. She didn't mention it, certainly. But I think I will do just a little bit of very natural highlighter. This is the Essence Pure Nude. I just kind of like a little bit of a glow. And it is certainly not overbearing. This looks very, very skin-like. A little bit on the Cupid's bow. Okay, now we are ready for a lip product. And I'm going in first with this Charlotte Tilbury Lip Pencil in Iconic Nude. I do like a little bit of a lip line. And looking at it, I think I'll go ahead and fill that in a little bit. Just give it a nude overall look. And I'm going to be finishing up with a gorgeous lip gloss from City Beauty. It's my absolute favorite. It is called San Diego. And I think it'll look real pretty over this. Okay, there is just the lip liner look all over my lips. Looks pretty natural, I think. Then I'm going to be going in with San Diego just to give it a nice natural looking gloss. Ooh, that is really, really pretty. I love that City Lips lip gloss, San Diego. Well, thanks for being here with me as I applied the Young Beautiful Girl makeup and let me know in the comment section what you think of it. You know, quite honestly, I really, really like this makeup. I really do like the look of almost no makeup, which I think this gives you. And, and it is so funny because years ago, I did a similar video to this one with a very light makeup and everyone almost preferred the really heavy makeup. 
So let me know in the comment section if you like this lighter makeup look or if you really prefer the more glam look. Okay, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day, and this one is about the household chores, especially a couple of them that I particularly dreaded in the past. And the first was kind of like unloading the dishwasher. I would always tend to put that off or folding a load of clothes. I pull them out of the dryer and I put them on top of the dryer and half the time they would sit there for a day or so. Well, the other day I wanted to figure out how to put those tasks into kind of a habit chain. And for those of you who followed my channel, you may or may not know that I'm big on developing habit chains for the things that you want to add to your life, like working out or something like that, doing your skincare. And so the first thing I did was I wanted to look at both of those jobs and see how long they took. And amazingly, I timed myself out on the cell phone and unloading the dishwasher took about four and a half minutes and folding a big load of clothes took me about five minutes. It was really nothing. And then I thought, how do I integrate those two things easily into my life? And I realized that in the morning as I am making my coffee, putting it through the Keurig, it takes it a couple of minutes to go through and be in my coffee cup. So I decided that I would use that time productively instead of just standing around. So if the dishwasher needs to be unloaded, I'll do that during that period and then I'll grab my coffee for the last half of that. Or if there's a load of clothes ready to be folded, I'll do that. And I really love doing it that way because number one, it uses a bit of time that I wasted before. And number two, I kind of look forward to doing those jobs because at the end of it, I know I have a hot steaming cup of coffee waiting for me. Well, if you have any household tips that make your life a little easier, I hope you'll share them in the comments section below the video because that way we can help each other and maybe I'll get a tip for a future video. And speaking of videos, I look forward to seeing you in my next one.